think the idea of insect flower is pretty new. It's only a few years old. Even in these cultures where it's traditional to eat insects, they don't usually make insect ingredients, but um, they have no problem with it. So I think it's a, it's a big opportunity. Have a particular interest in insects as a child. That that interest kind of grew out of um, my passion for uh, trying to help people and being interested in issues of f the food system and hunger issues. <laughs> and 40 years ago, do you think we were having Nobu sushi here in <laughs> Budapest? No, I don't think so. Do you think there was sushi in every strip mall around America? No, we changed culture. We took something that we thought was slimy and a little bit creepy and scary, and it became first a delicacy and then sort of a regular everyday part of our diet. So it's evidence that culture can change. And in the case of insects, unlike lobster or sushi, which are fun things to eat, this is actually a world-changing reason to modify our ha habits and behaviors. Yes, we need to make some changes in our diets in the short term for human health reasons, but um, what we're facing is a future when there's a huge uh, population boom. They're saying by the year 2050, there will be an additional 2 billion people on the planet, and um, the problem is that we don't have the capacity to grow the agriculture systems around the world to meet the needs of all of those people. The first time that I tried insects, it was in the form of um, like a spicy salt that was on the rim of my glass drinking a cocktail in uh, Oaxaca, Mexico. And it was this really nice spiced salt. And um, I asked the waiter, what's in this salt? And they said, gusanos. And I was like, gusanos? That, doesn't that mean worms? And they're like, see, sí, see, sí, worms. <laughs> And I just thought that that was really, really crazy. Um, I also went to Southeast Asia and had the opportunity to try insects as street food because you'll find market stalls where they have um, a lot of different insects available. And so I learned pretty quickly that uh, they can be very tasty. Um, and I think the major barrier is actually just the way they look and the fact that we're used to seeing insects in a context that has nothing to do with food. And so for um, Americans and Europeans, it's very unfamiliar. But if you think about it, they really don't look too different from shrimp or prawns or lobster or any of the other things we eat that are in the arthropod family. Like we already have a tradition of eating arthropods, just not insects. So what you're saying, like in, this, in, in the instance of eating sushi, we're actually not helping the environment as much as we would be by eating bugs. That's your point? Correct. So 250 gallons of water to grow a pound of soybeans and just one gallon of water to grow a pound of crickets. And don't even get me started on beef. Then we're looking at about 2,500 gallons of water for every pound of beef. And that might not matter in a place that rains a lot, but where I live in California, when we have droughts, this is a big deal for farmers. I have had a really diverse um, education and career. Um, I did actually study insects a little bit in college because I studied um, um, sustainable agriculture, which also has to do with, um, you know, food system change. And I studied anthropology, so a lot about human behavior. And um, in my early career, actually, I worked um, as a journalist and as a media trend forecaster um, and looked to you know, emerging business trends and emerging consumer behaviors. Um, and it sort of all came together uh, with, with Biddy Foods a few years ago.
But isn't it true, though, that we have plenty of other food options, that we don't need to eat bugs? I mean, we understand that there's subsidized farming going on. I knew, in, I grew up in California as well. I, we heard the stories, I don't know if you know this, but California is a massive dairy producer, and they used to pour 30 or 40 percent of the milk that they would, they would get from cows down the drain to sustain milk prices. They would, they, they would leave food rotting on the vine. Aren't there alternative methods to finding ways to distribute food, preserve food, dry food, store food, not even just conserving it, but just finding ways to get it out there. We are leaving food to rot instead of giving it to people who need it. That is absolutely true. And it's a really good thing that crickets <laughs> eat food waste. So it's actually a brilliant way to close uh, the waste stream. And Undoubtedly, uh, eliminating, I think it's something like 40% of the food that's grown around the world goes to waste because we have this really strange habit of piling up beautiful stacks of apples and things like that at the grocery store or discarding the ones that aren't beautiful in the first place. But um, you know who eats that? Crickets. So uh, that's a, a way to convert food that would have otherwise been thrown away into useful protein. So when we have an additional 2 billion people, we're going to need to come up with alternatives to meat. Um, because in particular, we don't have enough land and water to grow meat for 2 billion more people. And so that's one of the problems that um, lots of innovators in Silicon Valley are trying to um, come up with solutions having to do with um, new plant proteins, new meat substitutes, and a lot of it's being done through synthetic biology, um, like how can we, can we engineer meat from beef stem cells, or can we take plant proteins and engineer them in just the right way to turn them into an artificial meat substitute. Um, and my company, at my company, Biddy Foods, we're saying, look, there's this existing huge biomass of insects that are already here um, and it's a wonderful form of protein that has all the amino acids that you need for the human diet and you can just take that and transform that into foods without having to do a whole lot of work in a laboratory. The way this, the company started was really strange. Um, I started out just thinking about and talking about edible insects after I came back from this trip to Southeast Asia. And my friend Leslie and I started um, experimenting in my kitchen. And um, you know, we, we bought some insects, and we bought crickets, and we bought mealworms also. And we experimented with um, you know, turning them into a, a flour and then baking with it. And I was bringing, I still had a job um, at my old job at, at a media company. And so I was bringing like cricket muffins and things like that into the office. So they thought I was a bit crazy. And um, right around that time, the United Nations uh, made this huge report about how if the Western world would adopt edible insects as a protein source, in a, in a large way that it could stabilize the global food system and help to eliminate hunger. Let me just throw a couple of facts at you here, Andrew. The United Nations put out this huge report uh, in 2013 that said, it came to the conclusion that insects have the ability to stabilize the global food system. Mm -hmm. So you and I might not need to eat insects today. If, if we could democratize insects, instead of we don't just feed insects to poor people and rich people get to eat meat, that's not fair. If we elevate insects and turn them into ingredients, it, remove the ick factor, turn them into like a powder or, or an oil or something that you can incorporate into the foods you already eat mm -hmm. and elevate it as a superfood, then you take away the stigma of poverty. Basically by adding another, um, another source of protein to the food system and democratizing uh, insects instead of associating them with poverty, that we could make a real dent in hunger issues. So when that happened, um, we really realized that this was a much larger opportunity, um, that it, it wasn't just an interesting idea, it was actually um, the beginning of a trend uh, that we could help to lead. So this is cricket flour. This is um, the, the base ingredient uh, that we use at Biddy Foods in, in our products. And this is actually just whole crickets that have been ground into a powder. And the nutrition is incredible. Like, sure, we have other food options, but look at this. It has twice the protein of beef. Yeah. 
one and a half times the iron of spinach, and it's about 18% healthy fats, the same kind of fats, the omega-3 fatty acids that you would find in salmon or take a, a health supplement to get. And it also has this great fiber that improves the microflora in your digestive system to, to help you thrive and be healthier. So we're definitely seeing a trend, especially in the US, where early adopters, people who are interested in health, interested in sustainability, are not just trying insects, they're seeking them out, especially in the form of, you know, incorporated into other foods. Like at, at my company, we make cookies, we make snacks, we make baking flour, and you can basically put this into any food where you would normally have carbohydrate. Usually people are curious, like especially when they um, have heard about the benefits, like the environmental benefits. Usually the response I get is, oh, I've heard about this. I want to try it, which is really positive. But I feel like it's usually the older generation that is like, no, no way. I'm not tasting that. So these are some of those foods. Um, this is all stuff that I made. I eat bugs multiple times a week in the, in the form of baked goods. But doesn't Come on, that look that's good? a corn muffin. No, it's not. It's a cricket muffin You're with kidding. blueberries and a pizza made from cricket flour. Very most important thing is to make foods that are delicious. Um, and we do that by um, completely transforming the way they look. Like we, we turn the crickets into a baking flour. So you'll never detect any visual um, or textural evidence of insects. Then we make really delicious foods. So um, we make snack chips, which uh, are called Cheritos, and you'll have an opportunity to taste them. And there's also, um, we make cakes and cookies and things that are just really tasty. So part of it is getting chefs involved, um, chefs that have a high profile, that's super helpful, uh, that people trust, and they know that they're gonna make delicious things. I have to say, in this instance, I think you've burned this myth for me. I, I do think we do have plenty of other food options but you're right, it doesn't make a ton of sense to not take the super nutrients of bugs. So I will say that this myth has been burned. If you started adding insects to your diet, you would have um, arguably better uh, digestive health and it would encourage the, the healthy microbiome, um, which has lots of benefits. Um, throughout your body. And you would also be adding uh, really good essential fatty acids, like omega-3 fatty acids that you would normally get from you know, salmon or cold water fish. They're actually also present in crickets. So um, it's a really positive addition to the diet. And I don't think you have to tippy toe in. Um, you could just go for it if you want to. I mean, protein, we know the massive resource Protein in fish, beef, I mean, are, are you serious? Are these really the numbers? Little tiny crickets? So yes, the, the crickets themselves are really rich in protein, they're really delicious, but you know, I, I, I don't think there's a problem, I personally don't have a problem with people who eat meat. Um, however, do you eat meat? I, I do eat a little bit of meat. Okay. However, one of the reasons that I feel kind of okay about eating a little bit of meat is that it's going away in our lifetime. The global agricultural systems that are used to produce livestock would have to be increased by 70% to feed the next 2 billion people. So you've probably heard the statistics. By 2050, we're gonna have somewhere between 9 billion and 11 billion people on this planet we cannot grow enough meat to feed everyone. Meat's delicious. Nobody's gonna argue with that. <laughs> everybody wants to be able to, well, not everybody, vegetarians don't necessarily, but a lot of people wanna be able to eat bacon. Um, but, you know, what we need is um, additional forms of protein to substitute and to supplement um, as the, you know, as I was explaining, as the economics change. This is, this is like the protein challenge that is motivating Silicon Valley to invest hundreds hundreds of millions of dollars into like stem cell beef or you know engineering plant proteins into a fake meat or taking yeast and and synth using th synthetic biology to make it produce milk proteins 
we have an existing biomass of protein all around us that's eaten by two billion people around the world already, and that's insects, and they're right here. And all we have to do is harvest the protein and incorporate it into the foods we already eat, and it's gonna make a huge difference. This is, Brain Bar is the most amazing, passionate place where people are challenged to stretch their minds wide. But I hope then go out, become activists who transfer all of this brain energy into duties and obligations. We've got 13 years left to make sure that there is the end of extreme poverty and hunger, that there is proper education and justice and sanitation for the one billion people on the planet who do not have the privileges that we take for granted every single day. That's the message. Join the fight, become a global citizen, get involved with your resources, where your passions are, do the different thing which is engage with those in need and actually ensure we meet the sustainable development goals. Plate of the future is going to look really different. Basically, when supply and demand shifts so that uh, the demand for meats far outstrips the supply, mm. meat is going to be very, very expensive. Economists say that in our lifetime, beef could be priced like caviar. So you're not going to have a big steak very often. You're, you're going to have bacon bits, maybe, you know, like maybe a steak every now and then if you're wealthy. A lot of people on this planet will not have access to meat. So sure, okay, we'll eat the stem cell burger or whatever, but there's a really good chance that we're going to need to fortify the rest of the foods on our plate with protein. So you can imagine a pasta that is, is fortified with protein. And so instead of getting a big plate full of carbs, you get a balanced meal. Uh, and, that, and that's the sort of things that we're creating. Yeah, so, you know, look at this. A third of the Earth's land mass is used to produce livestock and the, and the food that livestock eats. Um, we, don't, we just don't have any more land to grow the meat or to grow the feed that they eat. And instead, we've got to figure out ways to take back some of that land and, uh, you know, use it for all these people that are going to be here as well. I'm sad. I'm going to be reduced to bacon bits. Uh, I have to say, it's bad news for me because I love cooking and eating and I love meat, but I agree. The myth is burned. <laughs> However, this is the tough one and it's what I alluded to earlier. Bugs are gross. Face it, they're, they're unhygienic. You don't know where they've been. Yeah, they, they're totally unpredictable in their behavior where they, they carry disease, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, it's just... It's not what people want. And like you said, the, the ick factor. It's like, do I want to imagine? We, they put memorable scenes in movies, right, where there's a, some bug leg hanging out of someone's mouth. Or they're doing these things that will never exit your mind, these images that they burned into you, thing like, oh, horrifying. You eat one. Let me ask you a question. How do you feel about prawns? I love them. Right? How do you I, feel about crabs? I know what they call them bugs. I know that's like the fishermen themselves say. They're cousins. Yeah. Really? Yeah, <laughs> they're all arthropods. They, yeah. They're in the same family. Those are just bugs in the sea. We're talking about bugs on the earth. Yeah, and just... also, Andrew, look at that. Does that look disgusting to you? I think it looks delicious. You know where it came from? Noma. <laughs> really? <laughs> Noma, the number one restaurant in the world. Recently dethroned by uh, a New York restaurant, but that's okay. Um, they serve insects. In fact, the Danish government gave uh, Nordic Food Lab about a million dollars to explore the gastronomic possibilities of insects because in my company, we use crickets because crickets, they basically sort of taste like nuts. Like mm -hmm. they're very neutral. They're not an exciting bug. Basically, crickets just take on the flavor of whatever you put on them. So you, you have to make them delicious. But right. there are other bugs like ants. There are ants that can taste like lemon. There are ants that can taste like vinegar. There are, there are certain worms, like wax worms, they use at uh, Noma, and they, they make like this beautiful texture for like a, a, a mousse or something. There's like all of these interesting culinary applications. So I would argue that some of the world's best chefs are using insects and they're not gross. They're amazing. If you think about it, there's like, there's an entire, you know, branch of the animal kingdom called insecta. And there's like tens of thousands of species. It's sort of like saying, you know, that you won't eat beef because you think horses and 
zebras and you know deer and other four-legged animals are disgusting like they have nothing to do with one another um, so you know there's a really big leap between a tick or a mosquito or a spider and a cricket like they're completely different animals so out of the tens of thousands of insects that there are there's around 2,000 species that humans have a tradition of eating um, a lot of them come from the beetle family and a lot of times people will eat the juvenile insect which is more like a worm um, and to be honest those are some of the tastiest ones like they tend to um, yeah, they tend to have great flavor. They have like fat that gives them a nice, uh, you know, texture. But they're kind of challenging to look at, right? So they're, it's something like I just don't think Westerners are really ready to think about eating worms yet. <laughs> um, but a cricket is actually an interesting species to start with because they're really closely related to prawns. Um, they're familiar and they're sort of less creepy crawly. Um, I think we listen to the sound of crickets on a warm night and it has sort of a positive mental association. So it's sort of about like getting people to make tiny baby steps toward changing culture and eliminating the taboos around insects. I think because of the internet and because of the speed at which uh, trends are disseminating globally, things are just moving so much faster. So in 2014, I gave a speech at TEDx Manhattan, um, and that was sort of maybe like six months after that United Nations paper came out. And in that speech, I predicted that within five years, crickets would become trendy. And I think I was right, because it's only been three years, and they're already arguably trendy in the US. Like, they show up in every like you know food trends to watch report. They're always um, one of the interesting new products at the food shows. Um, people who are in places like New York and San Francisco and LA, they know about cricket flour. The euphemistic approach to discussing meat and food has always been kind of fascinating to me. Uh, we use words like poultry, right? In Hungarian, in a, in, and in fact, if I've checked this across the board, in most languages, I have found this to be true. In, in Hungarian, they say baromfi. They don't say, they do say you're eating chicken, but they don't necessarily say, they say, uh, they don't say disnot esel. We don't say you're eating pig. We say you're eating pork. We don't say that you're eating uh, a tiny baby cow. We say that you're eating veal. We, uh, so we've euphemized these things already. Even meat had to be euphemized mm -hmm. because most people don't want to go out there and say, oh, you are eating a small sheep. They're like, you're eating lamb, you right. know, or whatever it is. And so th this, to me, faces even a greater challenge because this, how do you euphemize this? Okay, so first of all, we don't euphemize duck or crab or lobster. There are plenty of animals. Because that we, these are elegant, right? right? But, we'll but there's a professor at, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I think that that's it. I think their reputation has become that's elegant. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah okay. because they've got the same, because like I've spent time with, with lobster fishermen from Ireland or from Maine, and they do locally call them bugs. They don't say lobsters, right? Because right. they, they call them bugs. And that's that, I remember hearing that, and I love lobster, and I was like, oh, come on, don't call them bugs. But they do call them bugs, and they don't <laughs> euphemize them. Right, right, right. And I think if we called lobsters bugs, if you sit, went into one of those great restaurants in New York where they steam you a lobster and they're like, all right, guys, it's $26 a pound for your bug. I'm not sure people would be that excited to buy them. We worked with a celebrity chef uh, in the U.S. named Tyler Florence. He has a, you know, multiple TV shows on the Food Network and things like that um, to help us with our flavor profiles and to help raise the profile of insects. And then finally, design makes a big difference in branding. So we've been uh, really thoughtful about creating a brand that is fun and playful and inclusive and um, friendly for children. 
children and uh, and for women because actually in the past the companies that did try to make foods with insects they they took a very macho uh, sort of angle like it was very masculine um, and often was targeting like weightlifters or um, sort of adventure people like the television show Fear Factor <laughs> where they would occasionally eat insects and things and we wanted to pivot far away from that with our with our branding and messaging and make it um, friendly and inclusive and not scary at all. Who's curious about eating insects now? Anybody? A few people? All right. Wow. Does anybody backstage have any bugs? Anybody? Yeah, can, can someone bring us some bugs? All right. <laughs> let's toss those out yes, into the crowd. Yes, let's do that. OK, ready? I can't see you through the smoke, so don't, so, don't get hands in Hands up. <laughs> Yay, please share them with your friends. <laughs> so fun. Thanks, guys. <laughs> A big hand for Megan Miller. <laughs> Wonderful. Great stuff. Thank you. You were delightful. That was a blast. That was.